if you think this video is going to resort to some Tesla bashing, you're wrong. We're going to show you everything that you thought was wrong with Tesla may actually be the very thing that makes them as successful as they are. Let's start with some perspective. When was the last time you saw a car manufacturer go from bankruptcy to the most valuable car company on the planet? So Tesla's production processes are still evolving and maturing. This company's unprecedented rise to success is not only full of innovation, but since they have taken transportation into uncharted territories, they have become the scout, the trendsetter, and the blueprint for other EV companies to follow. What we're going to cover in this video is four different items. One, quality issues. Two, unorthodox leadership. Three, innovation on steroids, and four, a marketing strategy never seen before in the automotive transportation field. So Tesla is not just a car company. They act more like a tech company masquerading as a car company, intensely focused on transitioning the world to sustainable energy and making customers feel like they are part of this higher mission or calling. They have unwittingly, or by design, ushered in the world's biggest disruption in transportation since the Industrial Revolution. They are introducing not only a new breed of transportation technology, but spearheading the rapid transition from fossil fuel-based transportation to emission-free transportation at a pace never seen before. Regarding quality, if you're expecting a car with perfectly fitting panels, perfect paint, totally silent interior, you need to go buy a German car. Or from a tenured manufacturer who has had decades to perfect highly evolved QC processes and decades to perfect their craft of building cars. Brace yourself. The new and upcoming EV manufacturers will suffer from the same QC issues as Tesla since they have had even less time to mature their processes. Early design flaws, the pesky ones, that do not manifest during prototype and burn-in testing, like Tesla's door handle failures, breaking window regulators, misaligned Falcon doors on the X, and the MCU flash chip issues, all of which cannot be resolved with over-the-air firmware updates, will be the norm for any of these new startups in the exploding EV space. Resolving these early product design problems requires trips to the service centers. In the EV space, Tesla is the only manufacturer with a global service delivery capability and design problems are identified, improvements are initiated, and replacement and resolutions are handled under warranty. We venture to say that although annoying, any new radically different product follows the same path and Tesla is not unique in this regard. If you understand the urgency and overwhelming need to dump fossil fuel transportation before we make our planet uninhabitable for our future generations, and how we're not pressed for time, but out of time, the seemingly annoying trips to service centers to resolve QC issues in disruptive products like this by these new EV producers may no longer be the burning priority for you. Tesla also has a very talented CEO that abhors convention. He simply does not always act like what we expect from a CEO. It has been argued that Elon did not start Tesla and came in later. But let's not forget that he's the one that laid down in front of the rolling tanks to make sure that the company could survive. He has earned his legacy within Tesla. So Ford, GM, Nissan, Toyota, VW, BMW and Mercedes are car companies. They also lack visible and strong leadership, having become large, almost faceless and soulless corporations. Long gone is Lee Iacocca, Henry Ford, Enzo Ferrari. I'll bet you'd be hard pressed to name the CEOs of any of those other car companies I mentioned. Tesla has Elon, warts and all, unfiltered tweets, and the unfettered courage to speak his mind regardless of who he might offend? Leadership like this is mostly absent in our new age of political correctness and the litigious society that we live in. Aside from being the only transportation company at the forefront and leading the carbon footprint reduction charge, Tesla has helped us think differently about a number of things. And here's where it becomes even more fun. 
So let's talk about innovation. Tesla did not invent the electric car or even the luxury electric car. What Tesla did invent, however, was a successful business model for bringing compelling electric cars to the market. Innovation, you see, has its roots in breaking rules and defying convention. Me Too companies do not innovate. They merely copy and regurgitate what has already been done, perhaps in a different package, merely giving the consumer the same product with some additional options. Companies that usher in new technology and break our expectations of what is possible by doing the impossible do not emerge from within the confines of conventional wisdom and repackage. Real innovators often come from the fringes and they redefine what is possible. Tesla shattered our expectations of the family sedan. They thoroughly exploited the unique characteristics of an instant torque three-phase AC induction motor, which packs more horsepower and torque per square inch than any internal combustion engine ever could. By placing two of these in their sedan, making it four-wheel drive, they gave us a street vehicle that not only takes the family to the grocery store, but outperforms European exotic sports cars and repeatedly wins at the quarter-mile drag strip, embarrassing even the modified nitrous oxide, performance-cammed, highly-tuned modified street machines built for speed off the line. Tesla also realized that few were going to buy their electric vehicles if they cannot get fuel while on the road. When Tesla started, there was no nationwide charging network available, so they developed their own, with massive upfront investment, creating the largest global EV charging network in history. Starting with slow destination chargers like what you see here at this mall, they eventually developed a much faster direct DC supercharging network, which now allows cross-country travel in a reasonable amount of time. To alleviate service bottlenecks, each Tesla vehicle has continuous bi-directional communication with their servers back at corporate. Each vehicle becomes a node on their network which allows them to push over-the-air firmware updates, resolve bugs, and provide remote diagnosis, often even resolving problems at an unprecedented level which the auto industry has never seen. Tesla also gave us a wake-up call by introducing commercially viable and practical application of self-driving cars. Moving it from the lab and research and development activity into the Tesla Model S and out onto the streets, it allowed us to experience this game-changing technology firsthand. We began to consider that there may be a better way to drive than distracted humans on cell phones piloting a 5,000-pound mass of metal. Tesla does no conventional print media advertising. The media hates that. The normal balance of tempering sensational news against a well-paying client does not apply to Tesla since they do no media advertising. They are often the target of misreporting, sensational news, and even fake news. Any Tesla vehicle fire immediately brings out hordes of misinformed reporters offering wild speculations and off-base opinions. Well before any facts are gathered or presented. If Tesla spent hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising, you can bet that this type of misreporting would not take place. So, another way that Tesla decided to break the mold is the way they sell their cars. Instead of selling them through dealerships like the traditional auto manufacturers, they decided to uh, take their stores directly to the people in high-end malls. And it turns out it was so successful that even their competitors now are beginning to follow that same model. Selling their cars pose another problem. The National Auto Dealers Association, NADA, controlled for decades by powerful lobbyists, prevents auto manufacturers from taking their product direct to consumers. This is, after all, the information age, and the distance between manufacturer and buyer has shrunk exponentially. In the information age, parasitic elements like brokers and dealers are no longer welcome or necessary. People generally rank car buying up there with trips to the dentist. Following a completely different business model from the traditional car manufacturers, Tesla opted to break the mold and sell its cars directly to its customers through their own small intimate stores, thereby owning the sales channel. This gives the manufacturer full control of the car buying process and allows Tesla to educate the customers. Tesla was always rightfully concerned about the lack of attention their cars would get from tenured sales staff at traditional dealerships used to selling internal combustion engine vehicles. So, as Tesla attempted to go direct to consumers, most states blocked and fought them due to NADA influence. 
the upshot is that if NATO hadn't put up such a fight and let Tesla sell cars the way that they want, it would not have generated all the awareness and much less public outrage. Inadvertently, they helped Tesla convert one state after another to its direct sales model. Not all states rolled over easily, however. A brazen example of antiquated state laws controlled by NATO lobbyists is Michigan. No surprise here, after all, it's the home of the big three automakers. Since 2017, Tesla has operated a store in a high-end shopping mall in Troy, Michigan. Though employees are only able to showcase the vehicle, they cannot sell it. The model inside the mall even has a not for sale sign on the windshield. The power of lobbyists is never more apparent in this state considering many polls indicate that over 75% of the population prefers buying cars online or from the manufacturer. Think about this. How many people hang out at a car dealership? It's not exactly what you do with a family on a Sunday afternoon. No one really enjoys going to a car dealership, being swarmed by commission-breathing salespeople, and playing the let's make the deal game. People go to dealership showrooms reluctantly and only when they want to buy a car. On the flip side, when do people go to malls? Most likely far more times than dealerships. So to get your brand out there, Tesla brilliantly took their product to where the people are. Tesla also realized after the little roadster niche sports car, the Model S, their second vehicle, which was a family car, was going to appeal to the luxury car crowd. So they targeted malls in upscale and rich neighborhoods, the very place that this profile prospective customer spends their time. So how does Tesla advertise? They have a genius referral program. Every sale you influence that results in a new Tesla customer adds to your points. With these incentives, Tesla has recruited possibly the largest sales force in the history of the auto industry, creating fanboys and relying on word of mouth. Tesla knows that anyone that has ever driven or owned a Tesla vehicle usually becomes an immediate convert. And of course, tells everybody in their circle how cool it is to pass every gas station, have unprecedented throttle power at their disposal, a computer in their car, and how they are now doing their part to reduce their carbon footprint. So how do they control this massive sales channel and keep them energized? Simple. One way is by continuing to innovate and adding even more features to every new vehicle platform. Tesla, like Apple, is obsessively focused on the customer experience, making sure that every new vehicle release creates new wow experiences. The rest takes care of itself and the fanboy base keeps on growing and churning. I watched one of our techs coaching a new Model Y owner the other day. As he was taking the new customer through some features, we all eventually clustered around in awe as he demonstrated the cabin airflow simulation on the screen with verbal commands, eliminating the need to manually control vents. In conclusion, there's a much broader issue at stake. Tesla leading the charge and the unexpected rapid adoption of electric vehicles could not come at a more opportune time. Despite the wide gamut of opinions, climate change is real and the impact undeniable. The future of our planet depends on successful execution of many factors, with the elimination of fossil fuel use at the top of the list. Tesla understands the urgency and are a large part of meeting the global goals for emissions reduction. As always, we hope you've enjoyed our video series. We plan to do many more like this, so stay tuned. And as always, subscribe and hit that little bell button so you'll be notified when our next cool video comes along. I'm Pete Gruber. Thank you for joining us.